so in my last video, I showed you guys how to install um, ROM Raider and ECU Flash as well as get ROM Raider Logger working as well. Um, so in this one, I'm going to show you guys how to add Carberry to both of those. Um, so the first thing you need to do is obviously open up Chrome and go to ROM Raider. Um, the next place you're going to go is down to Forums and, and go ahead and click on that. And then we're going to scroll on down to Subaru. And then click on Base Maps. And then you're going to go right down here to Carberry 16-bit speed density project. And so now what you're going to want to do is scroll down just a little bit. And you can see Carberry ROM 16-bit speed density project right here. That's the first one you're going to hit. And so you can go ahead and read through all of uh, Carbibble's uh, post here. Kind of explains everything about Carberry um, and all the different revisions and changes. But down here at the bottom, and I don't think there's actually anything at the bottom of the second one, but I could be wrong. Nope. Okay. So you're going to go down to the bottom of the first one, and you're going to see these two right here. And so first you're going to want to grab this uh, Rev 4.2 zip, and then you're also going to want to download this. This is your logger definition, so this one needs to be added to where you put your logger defs in that last video. Um, and then when you unzip this, there's going to be more for you to grab out of there as well. And so after obviously those are done, we're going to head over to our downloads and we're going to unzip this one. See how it's already there. And if you open it up, you can see there's all this here. Um, that is obviously your, your base hex file for using in ROM Raider. Um, right above it, this is the map access ignition definition. Uh, above that is the load access ignition def definition, and above that is the which, this is an input determination file. So this is needs to be there to tell the, tell ROM Raider if it's a map or a load access uh, uh, ROM that you are loading. And I'll, I'll kind of run over that as we install this on everywhere for you. So, um, so obviously the first thing we're going to want to do is close these down. We're going to go ahead and want to open ROM Raider. So we need to go over to our definitions file, our definition manager. And what we're going to do is we're going to add. Actually, hold on. Let me uh, close this out first. I forgot to do this. So we're going to go back over to here, open this back up. And what I like to do is copy, right? So. Um, I'm going to click on this one and then click shift and all the way down to there, right? And we're going to copy this. We're going to go over to our documents. We have ROM Raider and we have our uh, definition. And so what we're going to do is actually paste. So that way they're all already there for us, ready to go. And so we're going to go ahead and click add again and go to documents and ROM Raider and uh, definitions. And I'm going to take all of these, but you just do it one at a time. And again, go all the way back through it. Oh. Didn't register the double click. And so personally, uh, on my own car, I run a speed density ROM. So that would be a map access ignition. Um, so I'm going to want to put this all the way at the top. And then put this right below it. And so now the way ROM Raider is going to see this is that it's a map access. So it's speed density ROM and it's going to know that it's speed density ROM for the X axis in that ROM. So it doesn't read in grams per rev. It reads in manifold absolute pressure. Um, and then right after that, it's going to be the, the base ROM and then the cars def. And then finally the load axis. So if I was to go and tune a uh, MAF tuned car, I'd need to put the load axis at the top. But for now, we're going to uh, apply and save this. And then what we're going to do to prove that it works 
is we're going to go back to um, the downloads actually. And we're going to open up that 4.2. And we can just open up the speed density base and find out if it works. And, oh, it didn't work fully. Okay. So we're not seeing all of the Carberry tables here, which is interesting. And I have a feeling I know why. So we're going to go ahead and close this. And we're going to go back over to here. We're going to go to our downloads and open up the 4.2 and actually run the application. There we go. Okay, so now you can see that this one has been, it's to a Bach file, which I don't think that's gonna work, but we're gonna try it and you're gonna kind of run along with me with this one. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and open it and see what happens. So I don't know if you saw, but down there as it's loading in this green bar down here in the bottom left is loading. Before, when I went to open it the first time, the speed density base hex, it read out as an OEM ECU file. I forget, it's AJX100 something. Um, when it went to open this time, it said opening. Otherwise, I mean, you can just see here in the amount of files that are here, how much longer that is than that. I even have a file open and it doesn't even take up a full page. Um, so there's your stock ROM. And that is your Carberry ROM. And so now the next thing after you've done this, we've already downloaded the, the, um, the file for SD logger. Um, and as you can remember from my last video, you should have your own set of your own file folder for logger defs already. So you're going to go ahead and, uh, actually go grab it and move it to so I like to copy everything I like having my download file my download folder I never delete anything from um, that's so if I forgot to move it I could go grab it um, as I'm doing this as I'm rebuilding this computer I'm trying to do everything right the first time but I still mess up I, some nights I'm, I'm just too busy to do things um, I've been doing pretty well on it, but I'm not perfect. Um, so we already copied that. So we're going to go ahead and go to our documents and go to our ROM reader folder again and open up our logger. Oh, that's actually, uh, my, uh, my, uh, saved logger file for my Forester. Cause that's the only car I've even tuned yet on my new, my new laptop. Um, I'm going to start with my WRX tonight now that it's running again. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and paste this file into here. And so that way, when we open up the ROM Raider logger, I can go grab it from here. Um, so now we're going to go back to logger. We're going to launch logger. And so now it's going to open up, right? We're going to go over and click that. And what we're going to do is go to settings and logger definition location. Remember, we went through all this last time, but you're going to want to select that SD 1.8. And then again, every, like every other time you change a logger def in ROM Raider logger, you need to close out and reopen logger. And I wish I, I could go out to my car right now and show you guys that it functions. Um, I'm going to prove that it functions in a little while. This is probably the most simple part of doing all this install is setting up ROM Raider logger um, for the SD logger. Doesn't matter if you're running MAF or SD tune um, or ROM, put the SD logger in. Uh, it has a different calculation for grams per rev, um, for calculated load. Um, there's also more things in here that you, once you're connected to the car that you'll see that the normal logger does not have. Um, but otherwise, that's pretty much it for ROM Raider. So we're going to go back to Google and we're going to go ahead and go back to the, uh, the, uh, 16 bit project. 
and we're gonna go scroll down and we're gonna go grab our last thing is this ECU flash definitions. And so again, this Carbibble's uh, post here. I don't know why my side's not showing up, but we're gonna scroll on down and he shows you or tells you how to put it in. Um, and I do it a little bit differently and it functions, um, but either way works. Um, you, you can grab all of these if you want. You shouldn't need all of them. I did before because I was working with multiple different ROMs. Some of them were on 3.65 or 3.6.5 and some of them were V4. Um, I'm probably going to show you how to put just this one in and open it up. Um, and then I'll probably go through and grab the others right at the end of the video. Um, but that's just so you guys can see that you don't need all of them. And I can't remember if you do or not, but um, we're going to find out. Um, so again, you're going to go ahead and extract these files, unzip them. And it's going to show up with its own little file folder here. And so all of these are going to enter, but we're going to take the entire file, right? So we're going to copy this. Now you're going to scroll on down to your local disk C, and you're going to click on Program Files x86. Uh, I didn't have to show you this in the last one, as OpenECU Tactrix does it on install for you. It's amazing, um, but obviously to add things to it, you need to go manually add them yourself. So double click on that. You're going to double click on ECU flash, not open port 2.0, ECU flash. And then you're going to double click on ROM metadata. And then I literally drop it right here. This is what I've always done. I have never done anything different. Uh, and it's always worked for me. See how it's sitting there? Sweet. Okay, so now we're going to close this. Or actually, I don't even close it. I just minimize it. Uh, we're going to go ahead and open... Where'd my ECU flash go? I must have, uh, probably my daughter, uh, two-year-old. <laughs> she probably closed it on me. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and uh, find my ECU flash. I'm actually gonna drag it on out here just because, because <laughs> I need it. And we're gonna open up ECU flash and let's see if it is in here. I don't see Carberry booted up, but we're gonna go ahead and give it a shot anyways. And we're gonna go grab that speed density hex. Uh, it's under downloads actually. I haven't moved it because I will not use that file, at least not anytime soon. Um, oh, I moved the wrong one, I think. Yeah, there's the ECU flash devs. Let's go make sure I moved the right one in there. So we're going to go ahead and close EC flash. I think I did that wrong. Yes, I did. Okay, we're going to delete that. Um, and we're going to go back up to our downloads. Yeah, I grabbed the wrong one. My bad. So obviously, as you can see, you could see that it wasn't even loaded in um, EC flash. It didn't even pick up the the... the definitions were in ECU flashes folder. So we're going to go ahead and go back through all this. I'm going to shortcut it real quick. There we go. Okay. Now let's minimize that and open up ECU flash. And I still don't see it. That's okay. We're just going to give it a shot anyways. Hey, look, they're all there. We're ready to go. Cool. And it, I mean, I hate the way EC flash looks for the most part. Uh, you get over it the more you have to do it. Um, but obviously, uh, you can go and change your colorings in EC flash, things like that. Uh, but what I do love about EC flash is that it has quick keys, unlike ROM Raider. Um, and the more you play with them, the more you'll figure out which one you like better. Um, I just wanted to show this functioning and working for you guys. As, like I said, I'm going to go drive my car tonight. I've got to put miles on that new clutch, the new flywheel. 
um, the used JDM motor. I want to, I'm taking a three hour drive, so I want to make sure that I'm ready to log to, to be able to make changes, uh, things like that as I'm going down the road. Um, if I see any issues, uh, things that I can avoid, stuff like that. But I wanted to make this video um, before I had to install it on my own laptop. I wanted to do it at the same time you guys saw me go ahead and go through all this. Um, but until next time, thanks for watching. I hope you guys learned something. I hope uh, this helps you guys get things rolling for yourself. If you ever have any questions, again, feel free to, to hit me up either on Facebook, on YouTube, on Instagram. Um, almost always willing to answer questions, help you guys out. Uh, plenty of you have already reached out to me and uh, I'm glad you did. I'm glad more people are getting a chance to tune their own cars or at least get a hand figuring things out of how to get these installed so their own tuner can can do things. Uh, I know plenty of guys that um, guys that own dynos that they tune plenty of different cars. They've never had to do the, this and you're setting it up for them. Uh, on your laptop or their laptop or things like that um, and I'm glad to just help anybody do this um, but yeah if you ever need any help definitely just hit me up all right thanks you guys see you uh, next time and I think on next video I'm probably going to show you how to do a uh, merp mod and and or dime mod I'll probably do dime mod first because that's what I run on my Forester and I need that set up here soon um, just so I can make adjustments on that again. And I'll probably do Merp Mod next. Um, I don't have any current tunes that I'm working on that are that are Merp based. Um, but I'd just love to, to show you guys that. The, and then uh, videos after that. Uh, plan on showing you some things like uh, some common programs that I suggest. Like you can see on my screen right here. Um, Megalog Viewer, HD, Timing Editor. Um, some basic things that I suggest you uh, you use, um, or at least they help uh, get things rolling. But yeah, until next time.